Welcome to the Gay Buddhist Forum, where teachers from all schools of Buddhism offer their perspectives on the Dharma and its application in modern times, especially for LGBTQI audiences. These talks are offered freely to the world and made possible by appreciative listeners. If you would like to support our efforts to share the Dharma with underserved audiences, please visit gaybuddhist.org. There you can donate, find a list of upcoming speakers, or enjoy many hundreds of these recorded talks dating back to 1996. So at this point, it is our tradition to go around introducing ourselves. So, <coughs> so let me start. My name is Oswaldo. My name is Prasada Chinta. I'm Eric. I'm Brad. Greg. Matt. Jason. Silas. I'm David. My name is Cass. My name is Roy. Jeff. I'm Tom. David. Larry. Matthew. My name is Clint. David. My name is Ray. Jeff. Jack. Alan. I'm George. Peter. Michael. Matthew. Grisha. My name is Brian. My name is David. I'm Hal. I'm Jim. I'm Michael. They are. Anybody we missed uh, so far? I'm Jonathan. And Bill. Well, you, Bill, uh, of course, not here. So <clears throat> it is my pleasure to introduce one of our member of our Sangha, a good friend of all of us, Joe Good. Joe uh, is the artistic director of the Joe Good Performance Group and a professor at the Department of Theater, Dance, and Performance Studies at the UC Berkeley. He has had a meditation practice since 1979 and has incorporated Buddhist principles and meditation practices into his choreographic works. His work blends theater, dance, and spoken word to focus on the palatability and perfection of the human, believing that the creative impulse is a step towards alleviation of being human. So, welcome, Joe. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I want to talk today about embodied practice and resilience and how an embodied practice, which is how I practice meditation mostly, can prepare one to be resilient. Um, I'll start with the, the last part first. I, I think resilience is, um, as we get older, I'm sure some of you can relate, and people start to disappear and vitality starts to disappear and things change, your professional life, your relationship life. Uh, um, you you need to be resilient in order to deal with it all. And um, I know that we, probably most of us, think that the meditation practice helps us to do that, to kind of approach life with a, an openness and a willingness to watch change happen and not be too attached to um, either the difficulty of it or the pleasure of it. Um, or sensation. Good. And then let's um, come to the kidneys, right above the iliac crest there, the little bulgy parts. I'm just going to create a little friction with the fingers. Again, just, just bringing pleasure and experience into the body. And then if you can find that iliac crest, it's pretty high. You'll feel that bony structure. You might have to fight through the love handles. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I've managed to figure out how to do it. Yeah? And just feel that. Trace it along. Just knowing that you have such a thing is really helpful, that it exists in your body, and that your torso 
sits down inside of it and all of your organs are protected by it. Good. And then I just want to um, curve forward. If you're sitting, you can rest your elbows. You might have to use your hands if you're sitting cross-legged. And again, just feel the pleasure of the round spine. Notice that when this position, the spine is actually fanned out a little bit to the back. So if you could breathe into the spaces between the vertebrae, as well as the spaces between the ribs, we're actually hydrating those discs. And as we get older, those discs get kind of collapsed and brittle. And hydrating them just by a simple, any kind of inversion, any kind of upside down, is very, very helpful for the spine. Really let the head hang, top of the head hang. Good. And then we're just going to um, do a little gentle squeeze of those big thighs. Just those, those big thighs carry us around, they, they support us. And a little brush on the inside. And on the outside. And over the knees. Keep softening the belly whenever you think of it. <coughs> and let's go down. Now, again, you have to adjust this if you're sitting cross-legged, but tap the feet. The toes. Good, and use your hands to come back up. And one more time, take your little rock. Remember that it's a lever. It's like a, a wooden spoon in a mud pie. You're just levering off the mouth of the spoon, right? Back and forth, achieving gravity. Um, let's do a little resilience exercise. So part of um, part of embodied practice or somatic practice is connecting imagery with movement, right? Simple. Um, so it's not just muscles and ligaments and bones and tendons. It's actually using images with those things. So we're going to do a little resilience practice. Um, and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, but we'll do, the, we'll do it once through with the eyes open. So the first thing we're going to do kind of as we were just doing, but on the tops of the thighs, I'm going to rub them vigorously and create heat. And now, as I'm creating the heat, I want to imagine that I'm bringing vitality and energy and a belief in the body to the body. I believe in this body. It's going to sustain me, and I'm bringing the heat. Good. And now, you're going to bring the, the heat over your eyes. You really need to take off your glasses for this. <laughs> and feel the heat. But the image is a kind of excoriation, a kind of searing out of all the unnecessary thinking the tape loop, the assumptions about yourself, about others, kind of burning it out, creating a kind of emptiness, searing out the, the, the monkey noise in your head. And then very simply, we're just going to open the gates and imagine that we are 
now that we're empty, we can allow new perceptions to come in and new versions of our experience that we can't anticipate. We don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be new. What does a new experience rushing into the emptiness feel like? Without assumption, without judgment. And then the last part is these open palms. I'm going to share that emptiness. I'm going to send it out. I'm going to share that sense of not knowing, of not judging, of being open and available. I'm going to be brave enough to send it out. Let's do the whole thing again. Hmm. Hmm. Get the heat. The belief in the body. Bring the vitality, the energy. And then burn it out. Burn out the judgment and the assumption and the fixed idea of who you are. Burn it out. Creating a burned out, empty, free landscape. And then open the gates. And allow new perceptions, new sensations, new experiences. a new version of yourself to happen. <clears throat> and finally, send it out. Share it. Share the wisdom and the strength and the vitality and the possibility for new. Almost every soldier that I interviewed said the biggest part of their healing was when they started to share it, when they started to help other people. And then let's just rest for a second, back, <coughs> hands on the lap. Big wide base, heavy sits bones, wide abdomen, wide belly, soft hips, soft shoulders. A few breaths. Notice the breathing. Hi, Tom. Hey, Joe. Thank you so much. You know, it reminded me of uh, the relaxation that comes the first day of a retreat. Mm -hmm. Where you just suddenly feel so relaxed, not to take a nap. <laughs> <You know? laughs> But you were able to do that so quickly. It didn't take a whole day of, you know, wandering around. So thank you. Thank you.
you speak to the kind of resistance you can feel in your body when you're, when you're doing this? Or like I notice um, there's kind of a no sometimes. Mm. Yeah, I, again, I think it's like a meditation practice. The voices come in, and you have to not deny them. You have to accept them and go, oh, there's the no. I'm familiar with the no. Now, I'm not afraid of the no. And it's part of my experience. And, but I don't want to dominate my experience. So I'm going to let it drift away and go back. But I think it is a very normal thing to feel the resistance. And again, like meditation, I think the more you do it, it becomes less and less. You know what I mean? It, the, the, the no has less power. You're able to dismiss it more easily. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's always going to be there. And I think it needs to be befriended and accepted as part of the imperfect, fallible self. Because it, it, it is, it's part of us. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I, I, I was, it wasn't as much the voices as just the feeling in the body, like they're kind of blocking against something. Oh, interesting. So, um, you know, that's often how I feel to know it's like a, a feeling of shut Yeah. Well, that is somatic practice right there that you're talking about. I mean, that, that our feelings are being expressed in the body all the time. Um, I think I would still say the same thing, yeah. that, that you know, the no in the body can also be excused from the room or allowed to be there, gently, you know. Well, that's that, with the feeling of missing something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can just extrapolate, you know, into how we live our lives. I mean, when we, when we say no to things and and we immediately feel like we're missing something, you know, because we said no. I mean, it's it's a very normal thing, I think, and it has to be uh, generously kind of accepted and but not given total priority either. By any chance, do you have anything like this on video on the web for people? Who see our recording. Is that um, anywhere? This is a very hard thing to video, but no, I don't really have anything. I get asked that question a lot, but I'm so, somehow resistant to that. I can't tell you why, but I feel like there's something about the body-to-body -body communication that I feel a little protective of, but I want to have it be on video. I don't know. Are you going to ask something? I really appreciate your talk today, and particularly the resiliency um, that we did at the end. And you talked about it and sort of connecting with images. And what came up with me with the searing was I know in national parks they used to not allow to have any fires. They would try to put them out. And I was up in Glacier a number of years ago and walked in an area that had been just completely seared. And it just has that image of allowing for new growth and new animals. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I guess I just wanted to share that. Mm -hmm. That's funny because I, I pretty much have that same image when I'm saying it. So when <coughs> well, we're <coughs> about to uh, run out of time. It's 12 noon, but uh, I'm sure that uh, you'll yeah. be hanging around. Uh, you can ask uh, Joe more questions. Uh, thanks again. It was a wonderful talk. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, couple of things that uh, I should mention at this point. First of all is uh, the mention of the Dhamma bowl. Uh, uh, the bowl that gets passed around where that sustains uh, our Sangha, not only the rental of this place, but uh, a few of the things that uh, we do for others, uh, like the uh, monthly uh, Barton Street uh, 
uh, meal for homeless youth from the mm -hmm. accommodation for mm -hmm. people uh, that, yeah, that are incarcerated and so forth. So uh, our suggested donation is $10 if you can afford it. And uh, the, uh, our host will be passing around with that bulb. And uh, again, welcome to uh, Bill to who's here for the first time. And uh, we open this up for any other announcements. Yep. Um, September 30th, October 1st, and October 2nd is the annual GBF retreat in Rajapani up in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Um, there are still one or two more spaces available. Uh, it's a really wonderful retreat if you've never been or if you'd like to check it out. Um, there are some flyers out here on the counter. And uh, if you are inclined or interested, please email Jerry Jones. And his information should be on the flyer. Thanks. Yep. So um, I am a dancer and an embodied practitioner. And so that's <laughs> a, uh, a great time to help make an offering of, I'm starting a somatic life coaching uh, business. So if you are interested in exploring more of these somatic approaches uh, and deepening any approaches to your um, considerations of life, um, how the body can in, help you in that regard. I'm open to talking, so let me know. And we have a host, Cass is a leader. With the most. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please stay and enjoy the fellowship of the Sangha. Um, there are some uh, vegan treats, meaning to hot water for tea. And um, I'll be coming, coming around with the Donna Bowl, so your generosity is greatly appreciated. Um, there's a sign up sheet uh, for new people at the, um, on the credenza. And at 12.30, some people gather at the front door and go out to lunch, and anybody's welcome to join them. Oh, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. We could <laughs> use another couple of hosts. Um, we're, um, in fact, on the weekend of the retreat, we, we don't have anybody scheduled. So if you don't want people wandering around looking for stale cookies, <laughs> um, so see me. It's a very easy and uh, fulfilling way to uh, be a service uh, to the song. Any other announcements? And if not, we. Uh with cold hands and do the dedication of <laughs> By the power and truth of this practice, may all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all be free from sorrow and the causes of sorrow. May all never be separated from the sacred happiness which is without sorrow, and may all live in equanimity without too much attachment or too much aversion, believing in the equality of all that lives. Thank you for listening to the Gay Buddhist Forum. If you would like to hear several new talks per month and be notified of upcoming speakers, so you can participate live. Please subscribe to this podcast, like us on Facebook, and join our mailing list by visiting gaybuddhist.org.